Hi, I'm Broom Hill, and you're turn. <laughs> you're tuned in to In Frame. You can, you can redo that. Live from Black Lodge Video in Memphis, Tennessee, it's In Frame. This week's guest, hip hop artist Broom Hill. And your hosts, Jay Lazarus Hawk and Jamie Hall. Hello, welcome to In Frame. I'm Jay Lazarus Hawk. I'm Jamie Hall. And we are Rising Fire Productions. This week we're fortunate to have a musical guest, which is something we've been striving for for weeks now. Uh, welcome to our show, hip hop artist. Broom Hill. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me, fellas. Absolutely. Thank you for coming out. Absolutely. Um, let's start off with just having you give a basic introduction of who you are, what you do, how long you've been doing it, just kind of present yourself to the world. All right. Well, um, my name is Broom Hill. Uh, I have been recording for about two years, rapping pretty much my whole life. Um, heavily influenced. Obviously, I'm from <laughs> Memphis, so I'm heavily influenced by the Memphis sound, um, but not limited to the Memphis sound. Um, I, I definitely venture out to uh, other places when it comes to music and other genres as well, other than hip hop. Um, so right now I've got um, a full mixtape out. It's called Never Lost for Words. Um, and I just recently did a feature with Too Deep, who was originally from Memphis but now resides in Atlanta. Um, and I'm just constantly working. I've got four videos on YouTube, high definition videos. Um, they're great videos. I was fortunate enough to work with Nina Stacks on those videos. Um, I'm just having fun with it, man. It's a lot of fun for me. And I believe we have a couple of those that we'll be taking a look at, and we may or may not see Nina walking in here. Um, my, my tech gentleman over there, Marcus Kent, actually how you watch the show, <coughs> right. um, he contacted her, and she's on a shoot. Okay. And like any shoot, it doesn't what always happens, fall into happen. plan, so yep. she's kind of working through the shoot and she may actually show up so awesome. we'll have kind of a little moment reunion moment if that happens cool. so <clears throat> you say you've been rapping your whole life whole life what got you started who was it that really um well i kind of i kind of figured out that i had a talent when i was young uh, probably around 10 years old um i just started putting my words together and rhymes together and it just kind of came natural and it was something that just just stuck with me and I was avid, you know, I listened to Tupac and Biggie and all those guys coming up. Um, I was listening to Third Bass and Nice and Smooth. That'll give you an idea of how old I am. Wow. So, yeah. um, I remember Third Bass. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was listening to those guys. And uh, Big Daddy Kane and all those guys. I mean, just just growing up, whatever whatever hip-hop I could get my so hands a, on. So a lot of, a lot of a lot what of turned into the bone structure yeah. of modern hip-hop. Is the old school artists, roots. the old school artists yeah. that a lot of guys go back to now and listen to to this day. <coughs> so, and I'm one of those guys. But uh, you know, I try to take in everything. Like I said, I, I listen to a lot of genres of music. But well, I think as as a rap artist, more so than maybe a typical rock and roll artist, that it's important to take in much more styles of music because you're constantly got to be looking for hooks. Yep. things to bring into your beats yep. to really stand out from everything else that's out there and you know you can find some of the craziest things in jazz you can find some Absolutely. crazy things over in you know various cultural music whether well, that's african australian yeah. well, or with something the hip -hop, like that so many things have been done <clears throat> so many times yes with your beats and everything like that it's it's good to have an open mind to different types of musical styles because with the way that the hip hop or rap has become you have to be that next person with that next biggest hook because that's you know not only do you have to be a good hip hop artist but you got to have that sound to go with it to make it even you, you've better you got to stand out from yeah. all the other hip hop artists you got to have an it, image a certain sound i mean it's I, I i say this kind of nonchalantly and don't get me wrong i don't mean it quite like it sounds but by and large it's easy to be a hip hop artist you just have to be able to follow a rhythm and be able to to deliver in that rhythm. However, if you have a vocabulary 
yeah. and you understand your language, you're going to go much further. Right. If you educate yourself in music of various forms, <coughs> you're going to have the potential to go much further to a much broader audience. Absolutely. I think of someone, I mean, you mentioned Tupac, mm -hmm. and uh, I, even, I would even bring Eminem into this. Absolutely. The man has a mastery of his native tongue. Ridiculous. He doesn't question. just use words because they rhyme. He understands what those words mean, how they mean in relation to other words. He can create subtext within a song lyric because of his mastery of words. And Tupac yes. was damn near a poet yes. as far as his use of language at times. Yes. So I mean, he was, he was a poet. Yeah, I mean, he definitely he, was. He was. <laughs> I mean, you know, Tupac get, got a bad rap because of who Tupac was. Yeah. The anger yeah. and everything like that. A lot of people didn't see past what Tupac the person, the person, other than the fans, I think. Other that's than true. the fans, but the things that Tupac said, a lot of people didn't really pay attention to. They they looked at the hard exterior of what Tupac was. Right. <clears throat> you know, even when Tupac was Digital Underground, I mean, a lot of people don't know that. Yeah. You know, he was you know Humpty yeah. ha the Humpty, oh, dance, the Humpty dance. You know, but Tupac was a genius. He was a lyrical genius. Absolutely. Yeah. He yeah. was. He was very good storyteller. Mm -hmm. That was one of the big. Big well, and, and it's funny you come back to storytelling because rap is, in in a weird way, the same thing that country music is. Mm -hmm. It's about telling the story of your particular existence. Yeah, country music has a certain <coughs> way of bringing a certain lifestyle and approach to telling a story. There right. are not a lot of country music songs that aren't stories. Now, right? are we talking about? Modern country, or are we talking about country from yes, you know, from country. past, from the past, country. because today's country Most is, of today's is garbage. Country. It's, it's, pop. Pop. It's, it's, it's pop, but it's been yeah. invaded by pop sensibility yeah. and, and and the pop approach. And unfortunately, even pop music now, it really isn't about the music. It's more about the image, and it's all dance oriented. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There isn't, you know, there's no longer real storytelling going on in a lot of these in a lot of the modern. Well, music. you get somebody like Merle Haggard well, or. You know, Johnny Cash. The thing is, when you hear an artist hit song, it's it's mainstream. Oh, it's almost always. But the a worst lot of times, done. exactly. When you a lot of times, but when you get when you when you delve into their albums and things like that, that's when you find the real content. But you know, you know what I'm saying. I, I'm not the biggest rap fan, but there were always certain people for certain reasons at different times. Um, N.W.A. Mm -hmm. I didn't always respect their point of view. <coughs> Right. But I recognized the talents that lied within, yes. and, and when they broke up, Dr. Dre, as we were saying before we went on the line uh, on the show, yeah. probably the best producer to come along since Quincy Jones. Yeah, that man understands his craft like no other yeah, active he artist. He's the Gene Simmons of rap too. He, he really is just fantastic. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> um, Dr. Dre is, and and I was a huge kind. Cube fan as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, especially when he branched out into film and actually got the opportunity to show people he was more than a rapper. Mm -hmm. And that people who did rap could be more than a rapper. And mm -hmm. I don't mean an actor, I mean he displayed true intelligence yeah. through his choice of roles and how he portrayed them. Yeah, you, you have to have a, I mean, you have to be charismatic as an artist. Because Absolutely. if you're not, no one's gonna listen. I mean, you know, there's, and not just charismatic in person, but you have to have that microphone charisma mm -hmm. you know when, where when you start rapping on the mic people are you're, you're snatching people's ears yeah you know and, and a lot of them seem to turn to gimmicks yeah um, sometimes that will work if, it, if, it does sometimes. it can work mm -hmm. it will definitely get you attention in an audience <coughs> whether or not that makes you a better artist or not <coughs> is a rare thing well see like I was and saying probably the only person to do to bring out a gimmick that worked Chuck D. Yeah. With Public Enemy, when Flav Flav was such a gimmick. Well, that, yeah, they were the f they but were the Chuck first had ones to do so it. Yeah. Much too sad. <coughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, in a, in a way, Eminem was somewhat of a gimmick with Slim Shady because you know mm -hmm. if you think about it, he had three different pers personalities. Yeah, Marshall. He had Marshall, Eminem, and Slim and Shady. Shady. Slim Shady was that guy that caught our attention because he was nothing like anyone you've ever he seen. He was nuts. He was insane. You know, it's nine inch nails to your eyelids and raping his grandmother and all this kind of crap. And you're like, what the hell is that? Was his gimmick? About? It got him recognized, and, and then, then he, became he started one of paying the, attention yeah. to his storytelling, and especially all this. when mm -hmm. it became 
Marshall Mathers. Exactly. Because with Marshall Mathers, he dived into a whole different pool. He, that's when he brought the relationship in with his mother, he yeah. his was baby's mom. On his childhood. It, and I'll yeah. admit, it took me a long time to sit down and really listen to him. Yeah. I, I kept, I don't like him, I don't like him. But when I sat down and really started listening to him, even the stuff I didn't like as much, yeah. I started to recognize the clever genius yes, behind it. Yes, exactly. I mean, yep. there's one song, I can't remember the title all of a sudden, but there's one song he has where he does this whole thing and the last lyrics of the song are something to the effect of, I just did a whole song and didn't say shit. <coughs> yeah, yeah, that's all. And then you listen to the song, he really shape. doesn't. There's yeah. not a single point in the whole thing. It's just about being stupid. That's almost like but you know you made it at he that he does point. it in a way that it works. Yeah. And that's not easy. It's not. So, so displaying your artistry as, as a, a white rapper in Memphis, how do you, Broom Hill, go about standing out? Well, um, I don't even think I've, I, I know I haven't reached my full potential yet. Um, and like I said, I've been recording for two years and I'm still, I'm really still trying to find my way. Um, but as far as standing out, I think, I think part of standing out is just staying true to who you are as a person. Um, and people will, you know, they're either going to like you or love you. Mm -hmm. There's really like, you know, no in between when it comes down to it. Um, but I, I just try to, I just try to do what feels right to me. And, you know, um, I, I just hope people respect what I do and like what I do, you know, and anticipate what I do, you know. Um, so, I mean, at the end of the day, I just want to be, I just want to make good music and, uh, you know, just, just do what, what is natural to me, and that is when I sit down to write songs, I let the music tell me where to go, you know? That's Whatever, if I like the sound of the song and I'm in a certain mood, mm -hmm. then I let it tell me what it wants me I to I love that about. approach because when we talk about stories, one of the things I say often is I, I really hate the formula writing because they say, you know, you go into it, it's going to be 112, 114 pages long, this will happen on page that, this will happen on page that. I, I can't do that because yeah. when I start a story, I like to listen to the voices of the characters mm -hmm. and the world that I'm creating and follow it where it wants to go. Right. And tell the story that needs to be told that way. Right. More than trying to take my idea and stuff it into the box so it is that, fits. That's natural for you though, isn't it? That's just a it's, natural yeah, approach. And, and to some degree, <clears throat> I have to learn the other as well. Yes. Because honestly, the only way, I think poker, if you're going to cheat at poker in the year 1872, mm -hmm. you better be good at cheating yes. or you're going to get shot. Yeah. How are you good at cheating? You know the game inside and out. Mm -hmm. You can't break the rules if you don't know the rules. So I'm going back and I'm learning all these formulas for writing scripts so that I can understand it and certain things make sense and certain things I have to go, I, the story doesn't fit there. Yeah. It has to do what it has to do. So I love that approach. Yes. Um, standing out, man, I, I mean, I don't, I don't really have that shock treatment like, you know, like Eminem or anything. Yet, I don't know. I might, I might do something <laughs> crazy here before too long. I, you know, I don't ever. Well, know. if you haven't reached your full potential, you don't know what's in exactly. there. Exactly. Yeah, I, I'm just, I'm still, um, I'm still finding myself musically. I mean, I really am. So, um, but well, that's at what the same time, is. yeah, right. I mean, an artist do that their whole careers. Really, mm -hmm. they reinvent themselves, or, or they don't, and they fade away. Exactly. So you, you have to, you have to be able to change with the seasons too. You know, I mean, music is evolving as we speak every know? day I mean it's so, it's so it's rock music 10 years ago was way different than what it is now rap music 10 years ago was way different than yeah rock music, music 10 years ago was good yeah yeah I mean I mean no I'm not there was that. rock music yeah. 10 years yeah ago. yeah, yeah right. there, there really isn't now. and people are listening to that stuff now because they don't have anything I mean there is why you have to go out and search for it last mm -hmm. week we had uh, Pat Memphis Mitchell music from Foundation. the music foundation on okay and we, we had a similar discussion about you need to the check state of music. Okay. But, and you guys going to say, if you don't already know, you should check them out. They're a very, very valuable resource for, for musicians. In town. Okay. They can help you with understanding publishing and licensing. And yeah. You might even end up mingling and, and connecting with some people in some positions. It's a networking opportunity. That yeah. you, I would definitely And love the Memphis artists. Music Foundation backs musicians in Memphis. 
they're they're very important. Very routine. strong support mechanism. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, you definitely need to check them out. Okay. So we're we're going to take a break here in just a second and look at one of your videos, but I, I kind of want to set people up as best as possible. If someone was to ask you what it is you do, how would you explain it to them other than just saying hip hop music? I mean, you know, what type of artist are you? What um, could someone expect of your sound if they were to pick up a, a song of yours? What I would say to that is, is I am, I'm an artist that recognizes what people like to hear. Um, and sometimes that can be mis misconstrued as like, okay, you, you, you understand what the people want, but are you making music that's <coughs> true to you? Right. Are you so, catering or... Right. So I try to find the happy medium to where I can relate to people, uh, make mainstream music, but at the same time, tell, your story. tell my story. But, you know, to be honest, I don't really have a whole lot of, um, like... I, I'm not one of those struggle artists. I haven't, I haven't, I mean, I've been through things emotionally and mm -hmm. things like that. Well, but, all of us. but I really had no one close to me die. Um, anything like that. I've no had abuse, relationships no. with it. None of that kind of stuff, yeah. like Eminem has talked about in right. some of his songs or in many other artists. Um, so I try to, you know, you don't have to just tell your particular story. You can speak on it from things that you've seen as well. Oh, absolutely. And that's you, where you opinions, distinguish yourself. I mean, Yes. Having opinions is what built Public Enemy. Absolutely, right. I mean, exactly. There were stories within, but ultimately Chuck was what prophesizing, or, or but he was. They was also been, they were a part of some of that discrimination <coughs> well, and hate and all mm -hmm. that stuff too, as well. But, Public uh, Enemy was Rage Against, Rage Against <laughs> the Machine twenty years ago. Yeah. But just a different genre. Just it was the other it genre. was a different genre. And I had a lot. I loved Chuck D. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I really did. I loved his. Didn't sound. care much about Flavor Flav. But I was a big Ghetto Boys fan. Yeah, Ghetto I, Boys. Their sound. Did, triple Six. People say, "Oh, Triple Six stole their sound from uh, Bone or other." They actually got their sound. They didn't steal it, but they got a lot of the elements in their music from the Ghetto Boys. If you go back and listen to it, uh, I mean, they. It's really well very similar. It's hard to be an artist of any type and not have been inspired by something. Right. Lean towards something. Right. Um, whether that's music, film, <laughs> fine art. It really, mm -hmm. I mean, there's always something that made you go, I want to do that. Right. But some some artists, I feel like, they've got their favorite artist and they, they, hone, they, they hone in on that person and then they start sounding like they, they start that person. They start to become that person. Yeah, exactly. So you got to be real careful you know, and, and stay true to who you are and not, you know, fall into the trap of somebody else. And that, you know, I'm like, I'm a huge Drake fan. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm a huge Drake fan. <coughs> People say things about him, like he's soft, he's this, that, and the other, but if you've never listened to Drake tell a story, he has conversations in his rap and, and tells stories in his music with, with conversations in it. And it's just, the, the guy has just mastered that, and it's just a fun thing for me to listen to. He evokes emotion. You know, it's and that's what music. If you don't have emotion in music, or you can't feel things when you listen to music, doesn't touch your soul or right. whatever. Um, you, then what are you listening? You lose to? that connection. You know. All right. Um, well, let's go ahead and take a break, and we're going to take a look at one of your videos, and we'll be right back after this. Cool. Um, I, I think my plight would be a good video All to right. listen to. Here we are.
I'ma fight, I'ma claw for what's right, for us all It's my plight, I won't fall, it's my life, I'll stand tall I won't quit, cause I'm sick, and I'm tired of it all I won't fold under pressure, cause I'm down for the cause You can take it how you want, can put fun in my flaws I'm a man, I'll admit to the world if I'm wrong But I promise I'ma do it with a head that is strong I just wanna be remembered and reprised when I'm gone we don't look the same, we don't act the same, we don't talk the same We don't grind the same, we don't dress the same, we don't walk the same We don't think the same, we don't love the same, we don't greet the same We don't feel the same, we don't live the same, but we bleed the same Fuck the fame, I'm trying to change the game A lot of faces, but they all the same A lot of hatred cause a lot of pain Let love replace it till it's not in vain In the pouring rain, you still see my flame Burning bright, why ain't yours the same? You ain't busting guns, you ain't selling drugs Motherfucker, go ahead and take the walk of shame You the one that got explained to your kids why you saying what you ain't never did Somehow make it alright and tell them it's okay That mama and daddy living as a hypocrite I don't get the shit, why you with the shit? Staying true to yourself don't cost a thing You don't regret it when your kids sitting deep in your brain And you the reason that they end up with the bullet in the brain Then the only thing you got left is the one looking in the mirror to blame Do you really wanna wake up every morning with that kind of pain? The closest you can get to us when you visit the grave I ain't sitting here trying to be a saving grace But don't cut off your nose to spite your face You got a long way to go so that road's a break But I'll never let the devil have my soul to take I'm a fight I'm a claw for what's right for us all It's my plight, I won't fall, it's my life I'll stand tall, I won't quit cause I'm sick And I'm tired of it all I won't fold under pressure cause I'm down for the cause You can take it how you want, you can put fun in my flaws I'm a man, I'll admit to the world if I'm wrong But I promise I'ma do it with a head that is strong I just wanna be remembered and reprised when I'm gone One dream one mic, one plan, one love, one life, one man, one mission, one goal, one chance, one time is all it takes. Different circumstance, they tell me I should rep my city, but what happens when my city ain't repping back? My roots run deep in the southern culture, it's my heritage, no rebel flag, run and tell them that. And your homies only call you when they need you, like a yellow cab, that's a cold hard fact. And you got dreams, but they ain't came true, so what happens when that gray area turns black? You can fade the black, or you can wave the white towel, and you can stand proud till your time's out. But you only as good as your last work, so it's time to find out what you run about. All the time on your ass like a traffic jam. If you a hustler, why no master plan? You don't like the noise of a cell door slam, then why you standing on the corner with a sack of yams? Serving death to your people, you a half a man. You say you can't quit, but of course you can. You always say you follow when the Lord's plan, but you lying like the dude in the tour de France. I ain't going nowhere like the Jordan brand, so get used to me winning like a Florida fan. Why you sitting there stuck like a Jordan's jam? You better try to change your love like a cloak I'm a fight. I'm a claw for what's right for us all It's my plight, I won't fall, it's my life I'll stand tall, I won't quit cause I'm sick And I'm tired of it all I won't fold under pressure cause I'm down for the cause You can take it how you want, you can put fun in my flaws I'm a man, I'll admit to the world if I'm wrong But I promise I'ma do it with a head that is strong I just wanna be remembered and reprised when I'm gone Alright, that was My Flight by Broom Hill. We apologize for the technical difficulties right before that. We completely lost power to our computer there for a minute, but we're back, we're running. We hope you enjoyed the video, and if you paid attention, you had the opportunity to start to learn a little bit about the man behind the music. Uh, you have a son, you were in the military, and from the lyrical content, it's very obvious that being a role model and, and teaching the next generation, your own son as well as others that might listen to you as fans, that being true to yourself matters, that being straightforward matters, that being honest matters, Absolutely. that it isn't about hate, it's about love. I, I really liked the message and, and the content of that video a lot. I think that was a very clever video and honestly Thank probably you. one of the better hip hop videos I've seen come out of this city. I appreciate that. that means yeah, my hats off to Nina Stacks mm -hmm. and whoever else that you had working on yep. that. 40 Kale, shout out 40 Kale. He come up with the treatment for that video, so uh, he's got some really good ideas. <coughs> and, um, I, I really did enjoy that. So I appreciate that. That means a lot. Thanks a lot.
you have any comments or on the video itself? Or? I liked it. Uh, it wasn't your atypical <laughs> bunch of pit bulls, dudes standing around with pistols hanging out their pants. All Watching day. a car jump up and down? Yeah. I'm, I, I am truly hard, and, and I shouldn't be this way, I don't know. I'm truly hard on the hip-hop thing. I, my roots go all the way back to, you know, Crow mags and, you know, old hardcore punk. Misfits, I know. Misfits, you know, and, you know, I, I'm very musically diverse. I mean, I don't just listen to punk rock. I don't just listen to hardcore music. I don't listen to just listen to death metal or anything like that. I listen to all kinds of stuff. I listen to classical. I listen to some of the modern pop. Yeah, everybody in our camp knows that I'm a Justin Timberlake fan. I really am. You know, and it's I, hard not to be. You know, I, I think. You know, I try not to be, but I got to admit, he steps up every time. He does step up. He he's a good musician. Um, you have to look past the the boy band and everything like that. Yeah. I hated Justin Timberlake as the boy band, uh, but Justin Timberlake as a solo artist is an amazing solo artist. Yeah. Um, you know, I like jazz. I, I like jazz fusion. I like, you know, I hate modern country. I hate a lot of the modern rap. Because a lot of times, and I'm such a, I'm such a music critic. I, I really am. Well, everybody has their taste. There's nothing <coughs> wrong with that. I tell people all the time, please be honest with me. If you don't like it, say it. It's okay. I'm not yeah, gonna you're your allowed head to off, have you know? the it's opinion. Fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as Just an artist, you me. need to hear. Exactly. You, you don't need people kissing your ass. No. You need people being straightforward and criticism. honest and constructive with you. I mean, in, instead of saying, man, that video was dope, you could say, man, that video was dope, here's why. Yeah. You know, or man, that video, I wasn't feeling it too much. Instead of leaving it at that, and, say, and that's I wasn't feeling why, it because. That's kind you know, of why I took that moment, because as filmmakers, as, as men who have made music videos ourselves, I look at that as, you know, what would we have done with it? What, would, what could we have right. done different? What could we have done better? And, and, I, and I really think that that video is what that video should be. Yeah. I don't think we would have done anything better or different with it. I think right. that's the right thing. See, and, and that's, that's what I want to hear. I mean, if, it, if there's something you feel like, you know, was cheesy or out of place or whatever the case may be. I like, the, I like the elements of bringing different people into it. When you brought the people passerbys, the, you brought the different kids, you brought the different aspects of the woman. You know, at one point she was ha hugging you, and the next moment she was pushing you away for mm -hmm. a reason. You know, <coughs> you didn't have 15 dudes following you, and so dressed up the same way that you were. And you know, yeah, you yeah. know, that's one of exactly. the biggest things that irritates me about rap today. Is number one, some of the music videos. Number two, is that they had on their CDs. I work at a CD. I work in a music shop. I work at Spin Street. So I'm looking yeah. at CDs all day long. Which I frequent Spin Street, by the way. I know and, Daniel. Daniel yeah. used to be the manager there. Um, and I see, I look at the back of CDs all day long. Mm -hmm. And I see the listings featuring, you know, Lil Wayne featuring DJ Khalid, Flo Rider, <laughs> you know, all these, all these other people and everything like that. And not themselves. Yeah. You know, it's it's hard to, to imagine that it takes that many people to do one song. Yeah. And well, it's about it's everybody's getting the credit for being part of the song is what it is. DJ Khaled is the guy that makes the beat. Mm -hmm. Little Wayne is the guy that raps on the beat. And if it's featuring, you know, Drake or whoever it may be featuring, you just gotta give everybody their credits and that's what that is. And that's why I, I, I understand. understand. There's a it's, side that makes there, sense. There's but a at side the same that makes time, sense. It really yeah. does to, to take it very left field from that point, but it's the same thing with Marvel Comics. It you go is, buy a Marvel comic, there's a 90% likelihood you're going to find Wolverine in it. Yeah. Because it's marketing. Mm -hmm. It, it, it is marketing. I, I understand as. that it is marketing. And when you're a big artist, you want everybody to know, hey, I was a part of this record well, or album or whatever. More than that, think of like if you had Eminem or if you had Dre, You'd sure want people to know that because absolutely, that's going to help me. Worldwide, sell. Broom Hill is a name that can be found. Yep. Worldwide, Dr. Dre is a name that's known. Yeah. So if you can find, if you can attach yourself to that, you want people to know that so that you can up your game. And that's the art of like reaching out to different artists for features. If yeah. you're a no one, if you're a nobody, and you reach out to, uh, like I got this song with Too Deep, who I was telling you, mm -hmm. is a, he's got a song with Don Tripp that's on the radio called Never Go Broke Again. It's a real commercial mainstream record. It's a dope record, but I reached out to 2D because, you know, I like him as an artist for one, and for two, it would help me 
you know, get my name out there. I can understand the marketing aspect yeah. of it. But when you put five different people on one song, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? When you, when you put five different people, the Beatles, they didn't have to put anybody on the same song with them. You know, even the bands today, Three Doors Down. Well, you, you know, know, they don't they don't put that many people on their on their tracks to be able to push them more. To be able to push them more, they're stepping up their game each and every time they make a CD. Each mm -hmm. and every time they record something, they're stepping up their game. True enough, they got their own fan following. Yeah, and and there there might be a, a certain different perspective in the in the fan culture of that sort of music that maybe wants that mesh, that mix up of exactly. artists. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think that ultimately it kind of makes it feel like the lead artist, and that's by that I mean who's ever actual album it is, right? Within the features, whoever that main person is, is really taking away from any talent or that artistry has. that they may have or may develop, <coughs> because they're allowing so much attention and work to go into other hands that they're not giving as much. Yeah. And I'm not going to say that's true. I don't know the industry, yeah. and I don't know the reasons for all the mashups and why it happens, but. Yeah. I do know that it's competitive like any other business, because ultimately, um, I think it was Kevin Max who used to be in a, a Christian band, um, the name of which escapes me now, but he had a quote where he said, um, you have to remember that in the music business, it's a little M and a capital B. Yeah. It is a business. It is. And you That's have right. to, I mean, we, we say it to, to actors, we say it to directors, we say it to musicians all the time. You have to realize that you are a commodity. You are a business. Yep. If you have a manager and an agent and a this and a that, it doesn't matter because ultimately you are still your own all of those things. Because you can't truly count on them when yep. it comes down to it. <coughs> you have to know this yourself so yep. you don't get screwed somehow. Yep. Whether that's Led Zeppelin getting screwed by their, finance, uh, by their uh, uh, financial manager in the 70s, or whether that's just getting screwed because somebody didn't show up to do their job and you don't know how to do that job now. Yeah. Well, you know, the music business, in my opinion, is one of the most cutthroat businesses it in the absolutely. world. Absolutely. I mean, I think it's more cutthroat than, you know, than what we do. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've, you're I constantly, agree. you constantly having <laughs> somebody always, always, look at um, Robert Johnson. Robert Johnson, the blues, blues mm -hmm. musician. His mother owns one picture of him and that's all she's allowed to own. Yeah, she can't own anything that Robert Johnson's name is owned by a big corporation. <coughs> That's why now you're seeing a lot of independent artists, such as yourself and other artists, form their own independent labels. Yes, it's because you guys can control. Man. Yeah, you have yeah. to control the things that happen to you. Is that a good idea? Some cases it is. If you're a person that can relate to the things if, being said. If you know how to mark, and with the internet there's a lot available to you, but yep. there's also huge, huge hurdles. Mm -hmm. um, think of television. <laughs> ABC, NBC, CBS. At some point, you can pretty much count on 95% of this country hitting at least four Fox, yeah. hitting one of the commercial <coughs> yeah. So, you know, definitely product placement commercials on those channels, but you know, and you get attention <clears throat> on the internet. There is no one place shy of possibly Facebook now. Yeah, there's no one place where you can really advertise, and even on Facebook, that advertisement sits to a side. It's not put in their face. Yeah. So they marketing yourself nowadays is a very difficult and it thing. It takes money to make money. Yes, it's it really does. Cliche as it is, you've got to. Well, <coughs> it doesn't matter what genre of music or filmmaking or anything. You have to invest in yourself yep. long before you ever see a return. Oh yeah, and it, it, it oh, you're talking take... to two people that know very well. Yeah, <laughs> I do too. Guys. We've I mean, invested I'm... everything, <coughs> including probably our future. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do too. And uh, I mean, you you can put in large amounts of money into this before, <coughs> but you know the beauty in it is it's you're having so much fun doing what you're doing, and you know in your mind that eventually there will be a payoff. Because well, I think if you stay, as you say, stay true to yourself, mm -hmm. believe in yourself, and and truly, <coughs> don't give up. Right. You have to then surround your people. You have to surround yourself with people that are going to be positive yes. for you. You're going to have to surround your pot. You're going to have to surround yourself with a team of people that are there 
with a common goal in mind. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Yeah, and it takes luck and, they, and, and what you do. And you've got to be able to have sometimes. these people capable of setting aside their egos mm -hmm. and recognizing that for any one of you to succeed, to truly, truly succeed, you all will. Mm -hmm. If one person allows ego or a personal gain to step into that, then no one succeeds, including that person ultimately. They might see a big return right away, but they're going to lose far more than they ever bargained for when that game comes out. Mm -hmm. Because eventually, it's going to be noticed. Mm -hmm. And people are going to see what that person did. <coughs> that person's going to lose friends. That person's going to lose opportunities. Yep. And that money isn't going to matter anymore. That's right. It does take it. It takes more than one person. You gotta have a team of people. You do. You have to have a team do. of people. And you, you have, have to, to have people. That's what right. I don't have yet, and I'm still trying to get there. So uh, I got people that believe in me. But you know, there's one. There's one thing of saying, "Hey," on Facebook, saying, "Hey, I support you." There's another thing of actually showing support. I say talking about support and not showing it is like throwing a bag of doo doo out the window, expecting it to grow wings. Sh shit don't fly around here. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That's what I mean. If you're going to support, buy that. you're going to support. If you're not, and, don't and, tell me you're going to. And this is a very difficult city to, to, ask to, for the to get support out of. It's not that people don't want to yes. necessarily even then. That's, that's the worst thing is I think a lot of people do want to. But in, in these times, money is so important. Money is so tight yep. for everybody that it's really difficult for people to come out. Go to the show on Thursday night. Go to the show on Friday night. Go here. Go there. You know, they're yep. they're more concerned with let's eat dinner here tonight and be done with that. Yes. That's all the I, I believe there. some of that is true, but I also believe at the same time. I also believe that it's a lot of things. Well, you know, with the stuff that we do, you do the music, we do the films. A lot of people look at it and go, "Oh, that's just a flyby kind of thing." Yeah, they can't really be serious they for this long for exactly, it. You're exactly you right. know, you put your heart and you put your dedication into everything you do, and people that don't support you and that want to belittle you, they belittle you to see that you give up mm -hmm. and go, I "Told you that it would never work." Well, of course, it's never going to work because the people that you think are your support groups are undermining are it. undermining you, trying to show prove their point. Yeah. Um, I mean, we all know it's been done to us, it's been done to me, but as long as you are, like you said, true to yourself and able to see the common goal, knowing that you're not going in this and tomorrow you know that you're going to be rich. Right. It could, it's not a get rich quick oh, No, no, and it's, it's not one, of, and I've said it a thousand times before, it's not something that you get to do from sitting on the couch with a remote in your hand. Nope. It requires work. Yep. It requires time away from your home. More it requires time job. away from your family. It requires time away from sanity, yes. sleep, <laughs> yes. food, everything yes. like that. It takes the time to do it. We damn sure know about the time that it takes away from everything. I've got kids. I mean, there was at one point last year where I saw my kids for 15 minutes every night mm -hmm. for like a month straight. <clears throat> but as long as you're dedicated to yourself and you don't let the naysayers bring you down and you're true to the art that you want to be true with, you'll be successful. And it doesn't take money to be successful. A lot of people think it takes money to be a success. Well, M money gets you advertising, money gets you marketing, money gets you awareness so that you can become a success. Yeah. But I don't think money is the success. No, I don't think it and is I think the success. And I think that's actually one of the biggest problems many people have, whether it's in business or in art. Money is <coughs> a benefit. Money is a side effect. But you have to go into it with, with a pure, I, I think, personally. Well, you know. You have to go into it with, like, a, like you were saying, with a group around you, but you have to treat each other with respect. You have yes. to go into it with a desire and, and a, a dream and the, and the, the willpower. <coughs> but I think you have that, that it all has to come from a genuine place. That's, I'm sorry, that's yep. the word I was looking for. It has to come from somewhere genuine. It can't be about making money. Right. <coughs> because as you said, you will never see the amount of money that you put, that into. You put mm -hmm. into this as in form of work very, and labor. Very, very few people do. And that, like you were saying, it's a cutthroat industry. Like, like maybe 0.1% of people Honestly, actually even, make money. Even some of the biggest artists out there mm -hmm. probably aren't in possession of the amount of money yeah. that markets the t or that balances out the time 
that they've put into their craft. Yes. Because, you know, think about it. I mean, you have to think about to the days that you started. Think about when you wake up in the morning and you're working on a film project. I'll go 16 hours, 18 hours sometimes mm -hmm. in a day. That's, you know, almost half a week of, of work yeah. in one day. And I'll get up and do it the next day. Yeah. <coughs> and, you know, I've done that for years now, almost 13, 14 years now. Off and on, not every single day, obviously, but throughout. And if I were to have a big success right now and make a couple thousand dollars, ten thousand, hundred thousand dollars, if I broke it down hourly through all the time I put in, mm -hmm. I'm making way less than minimum wage. Yeah, way Man, less. Man, you're making dollars. You ain't. You're making <laughs> change, I'm, brother. I'm making Thailand child. Yeah, you're making. I just recently wet got shop. my first song on iTunes. <laughs> 99 cent downloads, man. I, I give away music. I've had CDs printed. I've built a studio. Well, it's in my apartment, so it's just a mic and the software. And computer right. And all that. <coughs> a lot of people are doing that now. And I got a... Um, music Foundation also has Pro Tools and things like that yeah. that they can teach you and, and you have the opportunity to work on. So I, definitely, I need to bring my producer the down there uh, to do that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you're, you're definitely going to put in way more than you see uh, up front. Um, but I mean, I not everybody. Balance. Not everybody is, you know, a Jay Z. Not everybody's no. a Drake. Not everybody's it's special individuals. Yeah, and Even and them. not not saying that to deter you. I mean, no, 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 I, no, 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 I know no. that I'm not Scorsese. <laughs> you know, yeah. but um, in the businesses that we're in, I mean, it's 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 the luck of the draw. Yeah, I get asked numbers of times. Well, let, let me ask you. Let me ask y'all both something real quick. Hmm? Do you? Is it? Is it? Do you feel like you're pressured at this point, or are you still? Are you having fun? No, I always have fun. It's always fun, but it's always pressure. Yeah. Um, there's there's so many things to wrangle and make sense of, and schedule and plan for, and all of that. Because we have to do the same thing that you have to do. We have to. <coughs> we have jobs. <coughs> yes. We have to work around our jobs. We're going to have to take a break. We're, we're having some sort of minor technical difficulty behind the camera. Let's go ahead and roll one of your other videos. Okay. And we'll be back right after this. Um, go ahead and uh, do uh, Never Had Shit. It's got a feature on it. Um, In the motherfucking process to catch 22 So I gotta put my faith in God Hoping that he hear my call Kind of feeling like I gotta rob Peter to pay Paul Something's gotta give and I'm telling you my back's against the wall Underestimated, hated, underrated, never faded I just sit back and study the ones that's made it I'm so close I can taste it Often imitated, never duplicated This life I wouldn't trade it for anything Bitch I ain't got any shame I'm from the murder capital Better recognize my city name Now that I'm in the game It'll never be the same Doing any and everything to maintain Got nothing to lose and everything to gain That's why I'm paying my dues and exercise in my brain, in the middle of the rain, you gon' still see my flame burning bright, fuck the fame, man, it's all about change, in more ways than one, gotta get the money first, then I gotta get you fake, motherfuckers off a burst, why you thinking this a gift, it ain't nothing but a curse, rap is fucked up, and it's only getting worse, man, it's time to address these haters, so I went to the swamp and I got gator, look them in the eye, you can see that they afraid of the two of us together, bitch, you better get your weight up, can't nobody hold me down, can't nobody take my pride, I'm coming for the crown, for that I'm willing to die. I ain't never had shit, I ain't never been shit till now All I really wanna do is give the world a reason to smile But some of them same people be the ones trying to hold me down Call between a rock and a hard place trying to figure this shit out I ain't never had shit, I ain't never been shit till now All I really wanna do is give the world a reason to smile But some of them same people be the ones trying to hold me down Call between 
a rock and a hard place trying to figure this shit out. I said I'd never be shit. I used to buy the source, but I never read it. I just flick through the pics like I want to be this. You never know how hard this shit can get to you. Like yourself up in your bedroom writing. God, I need strength to keep on fighting. Stop, I won't do. I got to make moves. Shock the whole world by the time I'm through. Rocks in my watch, big rims in my car, but I still reminisce back when times were hard and I was fucked up. Wishing I could luck up. Motherfucker, pity real men get they nuts up. Now all the stuff. On dates, I would sit there and laugh. Be on Facebook stopping cause I got cash. Well, now you wanna talk? Kiss my ass, bitch. I put in work. Every time I spend a verse, murder in the first. More money, me, no problem. No haters, fuck I came up from the bottom. Nobody gave me nothing except my haters. Cause the gossip is what made me something. I was up and coming, people told me I was stubborn. I'm a cripple for a million in my hand. still running. I'm a black and red charger. Pedal to the floor, sitting on low pro. I'm in the league of my own One man army, leave me alone Me and Broomhill, bad to the bone Freddie K on the beat, fuck it, I'm gone I ain't never had shit I ain't never been shit till now All I really wanna do is give the world a reason to smile But some of them same people be the ones trying to hold me down Call between a rock and a hard place trying to figure this shit out I ain't never had shit I ain't never been shit till now all I really wanna do is give the world a reason to smile But some of them same people be the ones trying to hold me down Call between a rock and a hard place trying to figure this shit out Dick. I said dick! <laughs> the picturesque hamlet of Bolden, Connecticut. Your typical New England town. However, under its beauty, tragic history. Meet young filmmaker Pierce Linda, born and raised. Perhaps you know Pierce's grandfather, the former trooper of the town, and the beloved public figure. Pierce's friends have just helped him make a movie. And it premieres tonight. Not everyone is happy about it. This could be the best night of Pierce's life. Had he only known. I feel your death. A portrait of today's youth. Always looking for an escape. Always looking for a distraction. Always. I filmed your death. Outside the public access channel. A popular television show personality makes a disturbing discovery. When he finds that. I filmed your death. Two intoxicated youths take it to the next level. But when the lights go off. I filmed your death. All of these deaths plus yours, I filmed your death.
All right, welcome back. We took a look at Ain't Got Shit. By, never had shit. Never had shit, I'm sorry. <laughs> by Broom Hill. And we also took a look at the trailer for I Filmed oh, Your Death. Goodness. And we hope that you will join us next week because Sam contacted me. He's going to come back to the show. He's going to bring a couple people with him. We might take a, a look at a couple of clips or something like that. Um, and then on Halloween night, uh, I think it's a 10 p.m. showing mm -hmm. at uh, Studio on the Square. Square, Sam Bear will be premiering to a, a private audience. I filmed your death, the actual feature. So Sam is, is closing in on, on, on the final product, and I'm very anxious to see what he is bringing. <coughs> as, as am I. As am I. I can't wait. I think that'll be a blast. And so. I think it'll be a, 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 a huge, huge rock off of his back. I, I think it will be a, a major film for our area. Too. Mm -hmm. So be sure to join us next week when we have Sam with us. Um, meanwhile, back to Broom. So four videos under your belt now. Mm -hmm. How many how many tracks recorded? Uh, like 21, I think it is. So you easily have an album plus of material. Mm -hmm. Are you thinking of putting together a release? Uh, yeah, like I said, I have a mixtape. It's called Never Lost for Words, mm -hmm. um, and it's on Reverb Nation. I've also got hard copies of that. And um, how, <coughs> how many of the tracks, how many of the 21 are on that? Um, I think it's 16. Okay. 15, 15 or 16. Um, yeah, 15, I think. Okay, 15 I don't know, when did that come out? Um, it came out last year, about this time last year. Okay. Um, I'm more concentrating uh, right now. Other than, I do have um, a concept and everything for a new album. Um, the way I'm working right now is I'm just going to start just, just recording songs. And I've got about three um, toward the new album. I'm probably going to compile about 25 songs um, and then wrap about 14 or 15 of those songs around the, the title of my new album will be The Antidote. Um, and that it's basically going to be based on what an antidote is. Mm -hmm. It is a cure. A cure. Exactly. <coughs> for... Um, basically what I think is ailing today in hip-hop. So uh, I've got the concept and everything, I've got where I want to go with the album, and now it's just about making the tracks. So how long do you foresee that process taking? I, I don't know. I hate putting the time frame on well, things, it, but and, and, and I didn't mean to put you on the spot, because I do recognize, like us, you're a busy man. Yeah. As you said, you've got a child, you've got school, you've got the music, you must have a job as well, because you, nine to five. you have to live. Yep. So you've got a lot on your plate like any of us. I know that it's not an easy process. It's a, it's a painstaking, long-term it is. project. You know, we've been sitting here talking about different aspects of networking and stuff like that. We you really need, do uh, you know Robert Coletta? Yes. Okay. I've been to uh, MRC. MRC? MRC one time. Mm -hmm. Yep, and I was actually supposed to perform that night, and something happened, and like a couple I don't want to make Robert look bad because he's a good dude. He does a lot of things he's for the city. But guy. something happened where uh, he, he had told me that I was going next, but some other guys had went and performed. And I, I wound up hanging around a lot longer than I thought I was going to. And I didn't really get a chance to perform. The place kind of cleared out. Yeah. So it started clearing Well, out I can tell you this. I've, I've spoken to Robert the last couple of days. And Robert Coletta is, is a, you know, we've been talking about marketing. And we've been talking about this. <coughs> Robert Coletta is really somebody that knows his stuff. Yeah. Robert's got a lot of big things that are that he's trying to get to happen. Um, I, me, and him have discussed some of the things and everything, and I've told him they were great ideas. I'm, I'm not going to say what they are as of right now. Right. That's his. That's his I, thing. I completely understand that. But Robert is 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 going strong, and I think mm -hmm. with the direction that he's going in here soon is going to be a great thing for everybody. Excellent. Yeah, very, I know he does reach out leader. to a lot of artists, and he offers the MRC. And he's mm -hmm. hugely a supportive platform. of everything, everybody <coughs> that he comes across. He's, I mean, I don't think the man knows how to meet a stranger. No. He, he really is just he's a, friends with everybody. He, he he's a great to. guy. He works really hard, and he works really hard for the musicians that in this town. Not just yeah. the ones that he believes in, not the ones that he's just friends with. Any of the musicians, and I mean, he's been a big, huge supporter of us. He's been very supportive of us. <coughs> so that's, you know, especially in the music business, that's the person you need to know in this yeah, town. I yeah. definitely think Robert Coletta, the Music Foundation, <coughs> are, are yeah. places that, that can be very, very beneficial to any mm -hmm. any artist, musician out there that, Absolutely. that wants to really step up and, and understand themselves as a business. 
Um, if they have the opportunity to license, they can get information. If they want to go into publishing, they can get information. If you want to sit down and learn Pro Tools, like I was talking about earlier, they have workstations where you can come in and you can, I think you have to sign up for time or something like that, I'm sure, schedule time or something, yeah. but, but they have it there for you. They're doing everything they can to grow, support, and be there for the music industry of this city yeah. and really try to bring this city and, and give it the recognition it deserves for the talent that it has inherent to the city yes. outside of being known as a blues town. And Robert, Robert and the Music Foundation, they work really close with one another. Mm -hmm. I do have to say something. I've got to get a shout out to uh, Justin from Keyless, uh, congratulating him. His music just went live on Pandora. Nice. And so cool. he's 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 doing the deal, and I'm I'm proud of Justin. He's a hometown guy that's played music with a lot of people around here. So I'm on Spotify. <laughs> Spotify, Excellent. yeah. Excellent. And and as you said earlier, Reverb Nation. If somebody was looking yes. for your first release. And I'm on iTunes as well. The Never Had Shit songs on there. No Days Off is going to be on there. Um, and uh, I'm trying to get registered for ASCAP mm -hmm. right now. Um, just crossing T's and dotting I's with stuff like that. I've well, went it's, and it, that's to, uh, a very important part of the process because yeah. you don't want to put something together yeah, and, and have it taken there. out from under you yes. for a stupid reason. And that's what we were talking about earlier. You've got to know what you've got to know because yep. if someone steps in to do that for you and you just let it happen, you're putting a lot of faith and trust in your of your future into somebody else. Absolutely. And, you know, <coughs> it may or may not work out, but it's always best to be able to be the watcher behind as well. Yes, and be knowledgeable about, you know. I mean, I'm not saying treat them, them disrespectfully and, and just <laughs> sit on their shoulder necessarily, but make sure you're working with people you can trust yeah. and make sure you understand, at least on some levels, the job you are asking them to do enough that they can't screw you by doing the job <coughs> the way they want. To. Yes, true, true, very true. So we've talked a lot about the business aspects. We've talked a lot about your musical background. One of the things that I'd like to know about is how did you come up with your name? Um, <clears throat> Broom Hill comes from uh, my first name is Brandon. And um, if you look up the meaning of the name Brandon, it's Broom Hill. Uh, that's the derivative of my name, Brandon. Um, and I wanted something timeless, something that is always going to be significant to me and mean something to me. Um, so that's what I went with. I didn't want a typical cliche <laughs> rap name that's going to be, you know, corny and outplayed, you know, three or four years from now. So uh, that's 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 me. I mean, Broom Hill is Brandon. And I, I did always Brandon wonder about Hill. those artists. Like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, Lil Wayne. Yeah, you can only be when young and Lil for so long. Yeah. When you know? he started, he was Lil. Yeah. But now he's a man and he's still Lil Wayne. Uh, well, he, he's, he's even Stevie Twitchy. Wonder. Stevie Wonder was little Stevie Wonder when, uh -huh. he, when he first started uh -huh. out. And this is like you know he knew it well enough as he got older. He just kind of strayed the battle little, out a little bit. Yep. But I, you know these guys that are out there, 30, 40 <laughs> years old, calling themselves young this or little that. Exactly. It's kind it of. It really does. You know, young MC. Young back Jeezy. In, back in, in the, the young 90s Jeezy. there. Young yep. Jeezy, you know. There's all kind of youngs and lils out there. I mean, a, a, a lot in the underground scene, mm -hmm. too, mm -hmm. as well. A lot of mainstream guys have gotten away from that, though. You don't really like Jeezy's dropping the young off of his name. Already, it's Jeezy I was going to say, now. it's already <laughs> started with them. Um, and, then, and, you know, my, not only is, is it Broom Hill, but um, is, it's also um, it's Deep River. Lil Raven, Prince, there's all kinds of different names for Brandon. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want to be Lil Raven. I didn't want to be yeah. Prince. There's already a... There's already, <coughs> uh, there's I didn't already want to be Deep River, so I don't know, Broom Hill is there's just... There's already... Well, no, that's not a band. Deep River Band. Yeah. Little River Band. Little River. You know, I, it's hard for me to say, um, like, and I don't want to knock anyone else that does this right now that's young or little on the name, but mature, you know, it, if I'm... Lil White, it's hard, it, like, do you really take that seriously? You and, know, and if so, you? for how long? Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> you know, that one track, maybe. Yeah, like, that. I want to be taken seriously. But a I'm second not a or third rapper. album, it's really hard to call them Lil or Young yes. at this point. Yeah, I wonder, I, I wonder how, you know, how long you're taken seriously. And <clears throat> I'm not a punchline rapper. I really don't have a distinct, you know, 
uh, sound. I think I sound completely different on all my all my all my songs, pretty much. Like there's not you can't listen to one Broom Hill track and say, uh, oh, this one sounds exactly the same as this one. It's not monotone. Right. You know what I'm saying. <clears throat> so each one of them have their own characteristics. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah, that's the music important. The same. I mean, you don't want it to be. <coughs> But at the same time, you do have to have a similar sound that people identify with. I was going to say, you do want to be recognizable. Yes. So, so And that's that's where you're talking about keeping true to yourself, mm -hmm. but understanding your target market. Yep. Because you do have a target market. Right. Um, and honestly, in some ways, I think an, an untapped target market. Yeah, very in much that, so. In that desire to be a role model. <laughs> because... You know, the a lot people of people that need the role models mm -hmm. are the people that might not at first. I don't know open if, I'm, your music. if the desire is to be a role model. I wouldn't I'm not, say no, that. No, no, no. I'm not saying your desire. Um, I'm just saying with that first track we heard, especially my plight. Yeah. Where it's very obvious that you are trying to instill a lesson to yeah. your child. Yeah. And through song, you're also doing that for any other child that might hear it. Right. And there might be people out there that need that lesson, mm -hmm. need those words, that wouldn't choose to hear them. Mm -hmm. But your sound, the music sound underneath of it, your delivery style, sounds more <coughs> um, aggressive, mm -hmm. more what that industry expects in a tough rapper. Right. But the words But are... you're delivering a message that actually sort of ironically counter to exactly. the delivery. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think the dichotomy that that brings is a strength. Yeah. Um, and it allows potentially for that kid who wouldn't go out looking for a positive message that wants that uh, 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 mm -hmm. and he sees your video and he thinks, yeah, yeah. And over time, it's going to start to affect him. He's going to start to understand what it is he's actually hearing. Right. And your message starts to work its way through. Mm -hmm. And maybe they do start making <coughs> better choices. Maybe they do start realizing that black and white doesn't matter. It's who you are as a person. Right. And maybe they start to realize what respect really means. And, you know, all these people claiming you got to have respect, you got to have respect, respect me. Res it, that's not what respect is. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's pleading for justification, in, in my opinion. That, yeah, that, that's, that's people that's trying to, to justify their own egos, ultimately. And, <clears> and <throat> I like that you are so easy to talk with. You're so, your mannerisms are very gentle. And your message is very poignant. And you do seem to understand, potentially, who your audience would be. Yes. So you do have a sound in there. Don't, you know, you say you don't have a distinct sound. You do. Like I said, when we were uh, off there, I think. I heard a couple of these tracks this, this afternoon when Ken was downloading them so we could air them. And I knew immediately I wasn't hearing something I would normally hear in Memphis. I was hearing something that had a different angle to it. Right. And whether that was the production, the rhythm, I really couldn't tell because I was two rooms away. But I actually did get up and walk into his room, which is how I saw the, the clip yeah. that I saw. Um, <coughs> because it did stand out to me. So, kudos on that at least. Thank you. Um, <coughs> having gone off on that tangent, <laughs> are you playing out live? Yeah, I actually did a show last night um, in Frazier, actually. Okay. Um, I've done shows, um, I did my mixtape release show at New Daisy. Uh, I've done shows on Main Street, uh, done shows in Frazier, done shows in South Memphis, um, and I, and I, I perform anywhere, and you know, anybody that that presents an opportunity for me, and I look for opportunities as well. Uh, so I'm I'm not definitely not against performing. I've done I I would like to try something different with my performances though, because I'm right now I've been doing some of my club songs that mm -hmm. I have. Every artist has to have every rapper. Has well, to have club at songs. this point, because when people come to the club, they don't want to hear conscious stuff. Yeah, so they don't so even hear on the words, radio, they don't hear beats. You know, so I really want to go to. A club and do some conscious stuff. Though. I, that's got to be my next thing because I've had probably I've probably done like six, seven shows, and it's been all my club songs. And I mean, I, you have to have those records, and right. that's me because I've gone to the clubs plenty of times in my life and wanted to hear that. Well, stuff. even even Tupac 
had songs to Absolutely. dance to. <coughs> Eminem, Eminem had a few club mm -hmm. songs. Smack that. And, um, well, like you said, it. you have to have those because... It's just not every song has yeah. to be that. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So, I want to go to some of these clubs and just have people like, wow, where did that come from? You know, and make them listen, even do some acapella stuff where there's no beats. Because a lot of times when you're in a club, you're drowned out mm -hmm. by the music and you're not really understanding what they're saying. So if you go up there in a wild club and do some acapella stuff where you're making people hear you, either they're going to leave the building, go out and smoke, go to the bathroom, or they're going to sit there and be like, wow, you know, that was pretty dope, you know? I think it, so. if, when you do something like that, I think that's one of the moments where you really need to know your language. Yes. Where you really need to understand your vocabulary. I've got a song called you. Never Lost for Words that is one of my favorite songs that's got a lot of good stuff in it that uh, I would really appreciate if you guys would go listen to and get a chance. Absolutely. Absolutely. We, we would love to listen to anything that you got. And, and like I said, you know, within Frame, we have a page on Facebook. And I like I liked it. Did you? Yeah, okay. yeah. He, he sent me Hopefully, to it. I know at one point we were having trouble, but hopefully now, if you choose to, <coughs> you can go on there and post links. Okay. And we ask mm -hmm. any artist to do this. That's the purpose of that page, is so people can go and have a dumping ground for what they're doing. Okay. You know, there's there's plenty of event postings, and those are important, and there's plenty of these groups, closed groups, open groups, this kind of group, that <coughs> kind of group. But I didn't really want to create yet another arts group. I wanted to create a dumping ground where any and every artist could go at any time they want and post any link to anything that they've done. You could go in there and post links to your, your videos and to your songs and anything. Absolutely. You could use that. And you can that. do it as often yeah. as you want. You can use the outlet of us to promote all of that. I mean, that's why it's there for. And, and, you you, you want to refrain from a, from a certain type of stuff put on there or just anything? We, we prefer that it be worthy material right. but well often, I'm just saying like if I told people about you guys they're like they want to put their music on yeah, there yeah, oh yeah yeah I can't, you know I can't I don't have any discretion on that no but, and, hey, and we people. understand it is an open forum there okay. are going to be, be people out there that think what they put on there is art and it truly isn't but that will be for masses to decide I'm not going to act as a censor I have my own sensibilities I have things I like I have things I don't like I have things I hope don't show up on that page yeah but I'm not going to act as the censor because that's not the purpose of art. Right. The purpose <coughs> of art is to push a limit sometimes. Yep. Absolutely. And we need that. And, you know, if something is up there and it just is offensive, oh, yeah, don't look that's at it. When, yeah. Yeah. I, I will choose not to look at it. Right. And if it's something that gets complaints or somebody contacts us and really, really, you know, lays it out, We'll see about pulling it down, but we will contact the person who posted it and let them know why. Yes. We won't just pull down their things and let them think we screwed them. Right. But that is there for an artist of any kind at any time to promote themselves with. It's also there if they want to come to this show to contact us through. Contact us and we'll bring you on this show. Okay. And, and that's, you know, again, the purpose of this show is for the artist to yes. come out and let whoever might choose to watch, whether that's live <coughs> or later watching it just played back, mm -hmm. it's an opportunity for them to tune in, and in this case, who is Broomhill? He's more than his music. His music is what he does, and it's the important element. But who's the man behind that, and why should we support him? And, you know, sitting here with you... I appreciate y'all letting me... Absolutely. No, we believe that you, that all artists of all genres, you know, film, art, poetry, whatever, deserve to have an outlet and deserve to have your voice heard. So that's why we want you here, to be able to come here. And anytime that you have anything new, you can promote it through the website. You can even call us and tell us, and we'll promote it for you here. Yeah, cool. we'll, we'll talk about it here. If you have you a new video. You everywhere. People don't, and, people don't do that every day. Well, <laughs> this, is, this is just one of the ways we choose to give back to a community that ultimately we are asking to support us. Yes. We, you know, when we do events, this man of genius here, every time we do something, we look at a charity. What charity could we or would we want to give some portion thereof and or in some way benefit in what we do? Yes. Because that's a part of the community that supports us. With with his film, Cold Blooded, we gave to uh, the, I'm going to get it wrong. The Junior Diabetes Thank Foundation. You. The Junior Diabetes Foundation because diabetes runs in his family and is a very important element in his life. 
Right. And at the moment, it was extremely relevant because he lost a family member and friend to that. Mm -hmm. so, <clears throat> so we chose to give back to our community in that small way through that. Then we brought this. This is more than giving back to our community at large. This is about exposing our inner community, the arts community, to the community at large for all of us. Right. This is in no way about me, Jamie. This isn't about Rising Fire. We will use this platform just as much as we offer for other people. But we do our best to actually make this much more about other people before it's about us. Yeah. Because I'm not comfortable otherwise. I don't mind talking about what we're doing. He has done some amazing work behind the scenes on Nature of the Beast, his upcoming feature yep, film. I heard about that. More. The work he has done, the things he has brought into us, <coughs> <clears throat> have really made us go back and look at the script and realize with what he's pulled out of his hat we need to up the game on the script. That's a deep fucking yeah. hat too. Man, <laughs> we, we really, we really need to live up to his work. I've got a video that I was telling y'all about. It's a rock band mm -hmm. in the Harvest Mill that I did a little bit acting in that I'd like for y'all to check out. It's kind of a little uh, risque, whatever you want to call it, racy. Well, but, uh, <laughs> we always need people for various reasons, for various <clears throat> things, whether that's a background player someone to sit in a chair so our scene isn't empty. There's always that type of stuff we need. Oh and, man, I want, main, and we, I want a main role. <laughs> and we, well, see, we tell all of our actors, in fact, one of them just moved through here. Um, we tell all of the people we work with that if you want to become an actor, it's about showing your dedication. Yeah. Um, yeah Keith, Keith Goff, a gentleman that, that we worked with just recently that he was directing, ended up going to an audition for uh, Corey. Quarry, the HBO project. He got, a, he got a job, not a role. He got a job. His job was body double for the lead actor. So basically, he has to look and move like the lead actor and, and be present for light tests. You know, they're not, gonna, they're not gonna bring out the main actor and have him stand there while they set up lighting and see how yeah. it looks. They're gonna waste somebody else's time. Yeah. <laughs> that was Keith's job. Keith did it with humble, humble professionalism and because of that he is moving himself up into other positions and he has gotten himself attention for other things he didn't go in there saying well if I can't act on camera I don't want a job yeah he took the job they offered and he did it well right yep. and that is what it takes so no I'm not saying we'll only use you I, I as an extra <laughs> but by showing up as that Wait. extra you show us dedication we immediately think you know if he's that if he can be that dedicated we might be able to offer him something better. Mm -hmm. Let's see what else he can do. I, I'll definitely do that. And that's, how, that's how we try to nurture our talent and, and really find out what they're capable of, where their heart is, what it is they want to be. Yeah. You know, if we really see someone that truly, truly wants the act, they got that bug and they want to go, we will do our best to find them good, strong roles to work with if we can. Cool. If we find somebody that enjoys being on set, doesn't really do all the planned work, but will show up, that person's, you know, hey, we got another project. Come on and sit down. We got a few friends that are just, hey, anytime you need filler, call us up, Willie. Mm -hmm. They'll just come in and do whatever we need them to do. They don't care if it's a lead role. They don't care if it's a speaking role. They just come out and support. Right. And we need all levels of that. So it's, it's a very open field as far as we're concerned. We'd be glad to work with you, see what you got. I'd love to do something. We might even love the opportunity to <laughs> might even a video put, for yeah, you or something yeah, like that. Or might even use some of your music. Marcus commented not, on my status. Although I have to say, <coughs> it looks like you've got Nina doing pretty good work for you. She so. does, and she's very, very reasonable, and she's good, and I've got a guy that does treatments for my videos. And But uh, I put up a video the other day, I said, it's time I do a song for the ladies, a grown and sexy song for the ladies. And you gotta have it with a hot video. You gotta have it. Marcus said, I haven't done a hot video in a long time. <laughs> So, who knows, man? It could be in the near and you know, And you never know. You, you, some of your music might wind up, wind up in one of our films. Man, that would be cool. Well, again, this opportunity here, there's many different levels to this show and well, why you know, we do it. But the connection between artists to actually strengthen the unity part of community is the main reason. Yeah. Is to get to know. And that allows us to think, you know, we need a rap song or something like that. We know Brew. Let's go to Broome. And personally, and I think I, I can speak for Jamie on this, I think, I would prefer to reach out to a local or regional unsigned artist that has what we're looking for 
than try to get a Led Zeppelin or a Guns N' Roses or <coughs> Prince or you know whoever yeah. else you could think of. Because I think it's it is it's part important. of that unity yeah, is to is. raise each other. Mm -hmm. you know, we're going to build a piece of work here on film. I believe we use the music from here. I believe we use the artists from here to decorate our sets. I believe we use the makeup as much as we possibly can. True. Yep. That because that sense. is the unity part. That yep. is where really lifting each other up comes into play. Yep. And setting aside the ego so that we can all benefit and grow and have more opportunity yes. in the future. Because if y'all ever need a certain song, if you like if you have a concept or something you need a song for please reach out to me. I would love to absolutely, you know, absolutely. oblige to that and, and that would be a great challenge for me as an artist. Hey, they need a song about, you know, whatever. <coughs> whatever. And I could challenge myself to write that song and make that you, song. You, you never know. I mean, e even in Nature of the Beast, which is a vampire themed film, there's still a world she exists in and yeah. not everything's going to be the same thing. She might be walking down the street when a car goes by blaring something. Yeah. We don't necessarily want that to be the same style of music that we use in the club scenes. Right. Or we don't want that to be the same style of music she might listen to at home or that she might encounter at her parents' house. You know, we really want... I want diversity. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think back to uh, working with Craig Brewer when I did uh, work on uh, Porn Hungry with him. One of the things he said when he did that film was always think of the music and then you listen to the soundtrack to Hustle and Flow or you listen to the soundtrack to Poor and Hungry or you listen to the soundtrack to even Black Snake Moan and you know Black Snake Moan's blues mm -hmm. that's a yeah. blues movie mm -hmm. David Banner's on that soundtrack yeah so you really do even uh, Footloose even I think had I think there was a mess. Sorry, Craig. I've never watched the movie yet. <laughs> <laughs> I I did, and I have to say I was surprised that it wasn't what I thought it would be. It, Black Snake Moan? Uh, no, Footloose. Oh, Footloose. Oh, okay. Because I was not, I'm one of those I people, don't know if I, I was not a fan at all of the <laughs> well, original. Well, Craig Brewer redid Oh, Footloose. okay. Okay. But even in that, I think there's a moment where he's driving down the road and you're hearing basically a metal song. Yeah. Whether that actually appeared on the final soundtrack, I don't know. But point is that the diversity in his soundtracks represented to some degree anyway his experience in this city and and hearing so many talented musicians of different styles yeah. in one location sometimes literally in one location the high tone cafe mm -hmm. yeah you, I mean, they, did they get shut down i thought they were they, they moved. closed and moved um <coughs> okay and and i have to admit total ignorance i didn't know for years that jonathan kirksey owned that place I've known Jonathan for years, and I thought of him as one of the most gifted musicians in our town. Mm. I found out like a month and a half ago that he owned the high tone. <laughs> I don't know. Never knew it. We're going to take a reopened. we're going to take another quick break so I can go cough up a lung, and you guys can watch <laughs> your next video. You want to go open ahead and up tell them what video? they're going to watch now? Um, actually, we'll play a song um, if if you don't mind. Instead of playing a video, I've got a thumb drive. Can we do that? Yeah, it's going to have to be loaded first. What what oh, do okay. you have? Yeah, play. You can do "Built to Last." It's kind of it's got a lot of profanity in it, but all right. Well, we apologize to sensitive viewers. Maybe they yeah. want to turn off. But. <laughs> um, yeah, this this song is called "Built to Last," and it's basically just uh, introducing myself to hip hop, and and that's what I am. I'm built to last. Uh, I'll be here for a while. I'm not going anywhere. So get used to me. Dabble. 
before they see you make it, I ain't playing. That's why I keep my circle smaller than Duck Duck Goose. And if you keep it 100, then I'm 100 proof. Cause when I look up, you ain't there like a sunroof. And now your bridges burn, now who you gon' run to? I know this much is giving, they taking they mind flinching. And if y'all playing chicken, I'm ready for the collision. Keep watching how I'm living, my vision got a vision. I got the antidote, it's precision with my incision. I'm planning for my future, I ain't fucked up about my past. And I'm living for the present, homie, I was built to last. I ain't worried about these haters, man, they can kiss my ass. And I promise if I was a killer, I would've done blast. But I'll be damned if y'all ever had me looking through some glass. Talking about what you gon' do, ha, y'all just make me laugh. Got a team of hungry motherfuckers, y'all don't wanna clash. And my pocket's getting heavy, I'm about to switch the bags. Cocky on the mic, humble in real life You'll never know what success is like without sacrifice I've taken shit for granted, and even face planted Ain't a damn thing a given, but respect is demanded I've questioned faith, and I've tempted fate, and I've lost my way Staring adversity in the face is the man I am today I ain't scared of mistakes, I ain't fucked up by losses Do whatever it takes, but do it with precaution That's the motto, I don't follow no fucking script And I damn sure don't put no stock in a hater bump in That ain't no bullshit, better watch who you're cool with A smile don't mean shit to me, you can't play me like school kids Bitch, I ain't new to this, I'ma stay true to this The real ones close to extinct, I'ma show you they do exist I'm planning for my future, I ain't fucked about my past And I'm living for the present, homie, I was built to last I ain't worried about these haters, man, they can kiss my ass And I promise if I was a killer, I would've done blast But I'll be damned if y'all ever had me looking through some glass Talking about what you gon' do Y'all just make me laugh Got a team of hungry motherfuckers Y'all don't wanna clash And my pocket's getting heavy I'm about to switch the bags Last night Everything was fine No, everything has not been fine And 
and banging, I ain't seen a damn thing. Talk about money, you make it when I see those fake chains. Dirty J's and cracker jack pinky rings. Don't fake the deal, just keep it real or get up out my face. Uh. You say you drive a Maserati? Yeah, right. Talking about you bought the bar at the party, huh? Yeah, right. You talking yeah, right. tough about the goons up on your team? Yeah, right. You say you gangster, right. but you wearing skinny jeans? Yeah, right. Ha. You silly bastards, all you do is make me laugh. Faker than two gay guys at a strip club looking for some ass. Damn. We all know that that shit ain't gonna happen. That's the equivalent to what we hear when we listen to your rapping, man. Just give it up, we'll spit you some real shit. You ain't gangster, you ain't trapping, you ain't ballin', just quit Yo, I don't think they told you, but your clothes don't fit And all that bitch claiming you're doing, I call you misrepresent Claim to be a killer, but you never took a lie Claim to be a dealer, but you never touched a wife Hustle about yeah. chores, but you broke all the time Text me to play a man, stop with the lies yeah, You thuggin' but a coward's what I see in your eyes in your A robber, but you never owned a pistol in your life in You a real but you couldn't be the bitch if you try it, I'm yeah, right. right. yeah, right. uh, yeah, right. yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah,
never I, I listened think, to pretty see, much. See, and I had, honestly, I had the same problem with Kiss. I, I, yeah. I thought it became more about the gimmick than mm -hmm. the music. I never listened to them in depth, but, you know, I mean, they the have, songs they Don't had, get me the wrong, there are some good songs, and, and for Kiss, there's actually some videos that are very interesting. Yeah. Just because, you know, Gene We're not going to take it, you know, all, that was but, a crazy video. But I just, I never really got putting the image so far in front of the town. Yeah, and, and you know, the guys like it at ICP, you know, the guys that are at ICP, they put the image before together. Mm -hmm. You know, they knew one another, and I think that, that I think that's a tragic story. I'm not a PDD fan. I wouldn't give a damn if PDD fell off the face of the earth and never came back. Um, it's just, I hate, I hate when things become more, each of the things become more well, common with each song it sounds like another song. Yeah. You know there I mean? was a genius irony when MTV... Mm -hmm. You know, they knew one another, and I think that, that I think that's a tragic story. I'm not a P. Diddy fan. I wouldn't give a damn if P. Diddy fell off the face of the earth and never came back. Um, it's just... I hate... I hate when things become more... Each of the things become more well, common with... Each song it sounds like another song. Yeah. You know there I mean? was a genius irony when MTV started. Mm -hmm. Their first song was by a band called The Buggles, uh, led by a gentleman named Jeff Downs, who at one point was a member of Yes. Video. One, not mm -hmm. the original, but mm -hmm. the song was Video, Video Killed, Killed the Radio, radio Star. And in 1980, 81, now I can't remember mm -hmm. exactly when it was, but I remember sitting in a friend's house, looking at a television screen when that astronaut came on with the big M for the first time, and <laughs> MTV launched into The Buggles. Yeah. When it actually played and music, and at had that music time, yeah, on MTV. At that time, music was playing Led Zeppelin, <coughs> or excuse me, radio was playing Led Zeppelin and Aerosmith yeah. and things like that. Now, people like Aerosmith and Led Zeppelin wouldn't even get a record deal. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, other than the fangirl appeal, really, they're not attractive people. Right. And for a video market, you've got to be appealing. Yeah. You know, uh, back in the in the '90s, CNC Music Factory had that big hit song, and they had that really pretty skinny little girl up there singing the hook. It was fake. The girl singing that hook was over 200 pounds. <coughs> exactly. And they wouldn't put her on. And that was a huge controversy for a while. And I felt horrible for that girl because she had an undeniably gifted voice. Yeah. And they, she wasn't allowed to present herself to the public by contract for a while as a member of that band, even though she did all the female voice work. That's hilarious. Because they wanted to sell the skinny, pretty image as right. the Well, it was just thing. like Slipknot for a long time. Slipknot could not leave a venue without their masks on. If there were public, if there were fans still anywhere around, Slipknot could not go into public atmosphere without their masks on. It was in their contracts. They were not allowed to display their real identities. Wow. See, and I, I just, I don't get that. I, I don't either. Especially if you're not. In, in it's because performing, it's performing because the band. If you're done. The, it was because the band was built on that shot value. Yeah. Okay, you've got ten guys. Number one. And they might even be good. I, I'm not particularly a fan, but I've heard one or two tracks that's surprisingly <coughs> good. At uh, thought, you know. But, You've, first of all, you've got a band that has ten people in it. I mean, Sly and the Family were... I was going to say Sly and the Family Stone. Was it's, it? Yeah, like Conqual? five or six. No, it was... Yeah. It, you know, George Clinton, you know, they yeah. had twenty people in the band. I was going to say, he's got like thirty-five yeah. people in his but, band. But, you know, they were not, you know, they were not allowed to show their face. You know, even when Corey Taylor started Stone Sour, you know, Corey Taylor had such a distinctive voice that people were going to know who he was right. once the mask came off and he started playing with Stone Sour. You know, and they finally got out of the contract and go, it's time to let people know who we are behind the mask. You know, but when it came, you know, metal didn't come out of Iowa. No. You know, so you got a bunch of corn, you know, farmers or whatever it is, Iowa, potatoes or whatever, and you come out with this raw music that they came out with, and number two, they're out there in these demon masks and everything like that, and they they do so many antics on stage. That's what people bought. Yeah, yeah. they bought they that. They sell out and, shows. And that worked. I mean, Guar, <coughs> perfect example. Guar was started by a group of art students uh -huh. so they could play a friend's party. They had no intentions of taking that into a record contract. Yeah. It just someone happened to hear it. Someone happened to sign it. 
they happen. I mean, and and, and believe it or not, years, me, and, me and Kent yeah. were talking about this day because they did a re-indition of uh, Carry On My Wayward Son. Guar did? Yes. If you do not, if you have not seen the Guar cover on nice. Carry On My Wayward Son, look it up on YouTube. You will be proven that Guar has musical talent. Yeah. <laughs> it is. That's a bold statement. It, it's, it's I don't know. I don't know who. I've never Gwar, heard of it. Gwar is they a, are ridiculous. Guar is a band that claim that they're from a different planet. Okay. And um, their antics, I've been to a lot of their shows. Antics. Their antics. Um, like, they bring on people, they perform on stage abortions. They uh, they, it's all mock. It's oh, all mock. Okay. They brought Lacey Peterson's corpse like, back to life and cut her up and everything like, like that. They have swords, swords, in, they have swords, swords that shoot them, blood. They Biden have... Handsome, handsome. Well, you know Hanson Productions that did the Muppets? Yeah. I believe it's Hanson Productions. Uh, they make all their costumes. Okay. You need to go look them up. They're funny. Gwar actually sounds like Gwar. The actual name, G W A R, stands for God. What a racket! You know, because a lot of their music is just. It, it's I mean, all cornball. It, 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 it is. It's a big joke. It's like a B movie. I'm, I'm exactly. It, it's, it's like it's like <gasps> a, it's like a 1970s cult classic. I mean, movie. the lead singer, or I don't actually, is it Brutus? I think it's Brutus, Brutus Beefcake. Beefcake. Um, what have I heard? I've heard that. I don't they know. have they have a guy that wears a, a trap for a mask. I mean, it's it's over the he, top. When the lead singer comes out, he has two penises, one on the front and one on the back, and he will stop a show. And he did it to the New Daisy one year, and it was hilarious because all the stage hands were right there in front of the stage. They tell you to bring a change of clothes. To yeah, the show. and he wow. they shoot fake urine and pus and uh, blood it's, it's from the front really of the stage ridiculous. all the way to the back of the Daisy. It's, wow. it's hilarious because I, I snuck off to one of the concerts. I didn't take my wife. <laughs> <coughs> and I come home and I was like, I, you know, thinking that I was going to go to the concert and have fun and not have to listen to my wife yapping my brain about going without her. No. Because I came home, I was <laughs> You're covered. Stained. I was stained. But, it, you know, it's like going back to the ICP thing. Yeah. It's, it's an entertainment. It, it's something that, well, a lot of people wouldn't consider bringing Lacey Peterson's A lot of people would corpse. not consider a lot yeah. of them yeah. entertainment and would consider them to be actually ignorant, mm -hmm. but they aren't. I mean, like I said, they were college art yeah. students, and they've been on, they were on a Jerry Springer episode, mm -hmm. and the parents were just rattling at them, you know, how could you, Very do, intelligent this? People. you do this? And all of a sudden, Brutus, he kind of dropped the, <coughs> the Cro-Magnon presentation of character, and said, now hold up, let's talk one second serious. If you were doing your job as parents, would your kid even listen to me? <laughs> and he presented an entire argument to support that. And when he was done, I kind of, kind of was like, you know what? These <laughs> Maybe I'll actually give him a chance. Because prior to that, I thought very little. I thought they were a joke, an ICP, right. or a just, it's all about the image and there's not much talent behind it. Yeah. But when I actually heard the man underneath that mask, without taking his mask off, which made it even weirder, right. <laughs> actually present a logical argument that really pointed out the parental inefficiency that goes on in our nation and probably others as well. I haven't been there, but you know, we all screw up our kids. That's We're going to watch this there. video after the show. But <laughs> it really is a case of once I've met a little bit of the person, <coughs> I was curious now to understand their art. And bringing it back, that's this show. Yeah. I now know Broom Hill. I'm more inclined to go, let's see his music, than if someone comes up to me and says, hey, check out this rapper named Broom Hill. He's local. Yeah. Absolutely. Local rapper? Yeah. So many of the local rappers sound like they are a local rapper, yeah. so I don't want to jump out there. But when I meet the person, I, I take on that desire, right. especially when they make an impression, a good impression. Right. And as I said, you've made a fantastic impression. Right. Very, very well presented, very good mannerisms, easy to talk to, and very forthright with your information. And based on what I see in your art, I see a quality person under it all as well. Right. So that's very easy for me to connect to. Now I'm curious, like he said, to hear more. So please, post as much as you want onto that in frame page. Okay. So that it'll be out there for people to catch. Will do, now that I have the open invitation. Absolutely. Oh, you're more than flood, and it's, I'm gonna flood your site. And it's an open <laughs> invitation to 
you know, yeah, anytime anyone that you, you know. Any, if, you any, think yeah. that if you find someone you think is good, if you respect what they're doing, tell them. Okay. You know, and if you think that you run into <clears> someone and you just don't really dig what they're doing, don't tell them. But, yeah. I mean, it's your I call. Mean, Use your discretion. You, yeah, you, you, you do have to be very careful the lines you you know you walk. Ult ultimately there is the risk of guilty by association in any situation yeah. so you know that one person comes on there and does a music video where all of a sudden you're looking at something you really don't want to look at you know it's potential that that comes back oh well that was somebody broom hill told i wouldn't worry too much about that i, I really hope that people understand that the in-frame page is for the individual to make their own discernment about what they think is art yes. and pursue the ones they like and when they see something they don't like go past it yep. don't don't make a big deal about it because honestly if it isn't good and you make a big deal about it now people want to know what the big deal is so they go and look and now you've raised the publicity absolutely it was one of the things i never understood about uh the last temptation of christ is a great example all of the hype <coughs> and anti that movie that the the church put on just made only it made build more up. and more oh, yeah. people go. What are they upset about? Let's go find out. It was just like passion of the Christ. Just like passion of the Christ. Exactly. But they, like did, yeah, they the didn't Christ. care about that. They just they just knew they had a problem with it. They so just they, wanted to go out and, and scream their problem. Mm -hmm. We as but, humans are gonna. I mean, if something like the church is gonna do something and say something negative, mm -hmm. especially in these days and times where everybody else is gonna go out and find out why. You know, especially mm -hmm. in these days and times where you know so many people's been screwed in the name of Christ, you know, people are going to run and, and, and be like, I'm going to see this because the church is saying it's no, no, no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sometimes wonder how Jesus would feel it's, about his name being turned into a weapon. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, you got the Miley Cyrus situation. She's all gimmick. That's just a mess. It it is. She's not even it a gimmick. Is. That's anymore. Billy Ray. That's Billy. No. She that's, is a hot mess. Yeah. Yes. I don't care how much talent you have. That's karma can't... coming around for that mullet Billy Ray Cyrus had today <laughs> in the 90s. If, if yeah, you she's... can't control yourself intelligently, your talent isn't benefiting you. Yeah, she's, she's just that shock. She wants people to pay attention, yeah. and she don't know how else to get it, so she's going to make it where it just be ridiculous with you. And that's all she's doing. I, well, you know, a person told me a long time ago, talented. ignorance is bliss. <laughs> yeah. Ignorance uh, is truly be, bliss. She must truly be blissful then, <coughs> based on what we, we yeah, see. Yeah, what we the, well, especially what we saw on well, what I saw on the music awards. Oh, uh, yeah, that was the tongue and all that. Yeah, that the was whole thing. Robin and then she was Thick. pregnant by Juicy J. Did y'all hear that? Yeah, I don't know if that was just a marketing scheme. I, I really messy stuff. Yeah. I try not to pay attention to most of that type of stuff. But doing because the music that I do, you know, that's I, taking away from any. If she is extremely talented, I'll never know it. Yeah. Exactly. Because all of that BS has just made me turn my back. And, and you're talking to yeah. somebody that watched Hannah Montana grow up. I mean, I had yeah. two daughters. Yeah. And I mean, I got roped into more than one time of having to sit down and watch marathons of Hannah Montana. I'm sorry. Yeah, I've even got a button on my leather jacket of Hannah Montana. My kids, my daughters loved it. And I was like, you know what? It's going to be a shame that this kid's going to grow up to be worse than coming off all of jacket. them. You know, and she she's now worse than you know. She's our current Britney Spears tragedy. Well, yeah, because yeah, Britney shaved her head too. Yeah. Can't somebody was... do anything original anymore? Everything's been done, yeah. man. Well, the thing, it, but it hasn't been done. Yeah, the problem is that the people doing the original work aren't getting signed because record companies don't aren't convinced that it'll make money because much like the film industry, they are trying to please the largest common denominator. And when they reach out and try to, to satisfy the lowest common denominator, the, the largest <coughs> number of people, they end up really alienating most of them because now there's nothing of substance. It's all reduced to what as many people as possible can get something out of. Well, if Molly Cyrus wants and to I think that really me, takes depth. She cut her it. throat on stage. I'd be impressed. <laughs> it's horrible. You'd be happy. I would. I'd be in you know, thoroughly. <laughs> That's, That's entertainment. entertainment. <laughs> That's entertainment. Self mutilation on stage. All right. Well, we got just a few more minutes left. Um, we wanted to bring someone else out here real quick. Tarek. So if you can jump down one seat, sure. possibly. Sure. We're going to ask Tarek to come on out here. Tarek Collins, join us, sir. Welcome to the dude. show. 
You're too tall to walk on your mic. Oh no. As I say, I think you hit your head there. <coughs> this is Tarek Collins. This is a, doing, a local nice actor. Nice to meet you. That's Broomhill, a uh, musician. Tarek is a, a gentleman that's been coming to the classes we were running for a while. We've actually put those classes on hold for the remainder of the year just because the nature of the beast has become its own beast yeah. and is requiring way too much time and focus for us right now to be able to actually productively run our classes. <coughs> so we've temporarily shut down our classes. Tarek was one of our regular students. He worked with us for several weeks. Um, I met you on the set of Nature. Nope. You met him on the I met him head on, shop, uh, wasn't Lights, lights camera, camera bullshit. Yeah, That's the right. Piano Man Pictures. Yeah. Sorry about that, gentlemen. It took me a minute to remember the name. Um, now, we, of course, have had Chad on the show promoting that film, and you did a, a just one scene with them? Yeah, I just did an extra scene. As an extra? Yeah. yeah. And then... He was also an extra in the Nature of the Beast trailer. I was going to say, and then you were an extra in Nature mm -hmm. of the Beast for us because Door of Armor... <coughs> told you to come, come to out you. and check out check us out that led to you coming to our acting class mm -hmm. how have you felt you know that's in a, in a fairly brief period of time you've gone from just showing up on a set to do a bit scene to having done a couple of sets to having had the opportunity to work with several other actors to work with two different directors who despite what many people think really do have some different perspectives on how things work mm -hmm. how has that affected you as an actor. Well, you also have to mention to that he's he's went from, <coughs> in a short period of time, went from doing extra stuff to coming to classes to actually landing the lead role. I was, I was actually going to no. get there, but... Um, <laughs> womp, womp, womp. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. But how, ha how has that first part of that process, that whole showing up on a set to now taking regular classes and working with other actors, how's that affected you? Well, I've always seen movies all my life just wanting to be in the scene and then when I first went on to lights camera bullshit I was able to see how it is and how they do everything and I was like I instantly clicked with it I there got the bug yeah I got the bug as they say it but um <coughs> I just when I was there I just wanted to stay all day and I just I loved how Every little detail that they did, every little like scene, every take, every <coughs> whatever they did, I was so interested in everything. And then when I came to your class, I was kind of nervous at first. I didn't know how it was going to be. But ever since then, it's, it has taught me a lot, and it felt really good. It's been a ride. Now, as he said, through that time and, and through those classes, you managed to unlock a few doors within yourself mm -hmm. and in the long run made an impression on Jamie that caused him to recast a lead role in Afterlife which will still get made at some point we're just arguing with weather and health issues and timing all, on all fronts but he ended up seeing in you something that he truly thought he could work with in a lead role what was that? How did that feel to, to know that in such a short time period <coughs> an active director in town wanted you? That, that was something was seen in you? I didn't really have words for it. It was because you're sexiness. See, that's what I was thinking, <laughs> but I didn't want to say it. You know. <coughs> what no. you do behind closed doors? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um... I mean, did it did it justify the the time and effort you were starting to put into it for you, or I think it did, but also it it was something I've always wanted to do, and just to know that I have just the opportunity to show what I can do, it felt really good. I mean, because you've came, we started our classes in January, January. and. You started coming to our classes after the nature, which was January thirteenth, I believe it was. You started coming. Sounds right. Yeah, you started coming to classes after mm -hmm. that, and you started working things. Um, we started on. We didn't start out on any. We started out on some monologues. Mm -hmm. We had monologues. <coughs> uh, 
we had a scene from Psycho. Mm -hmm. I had the scene from Girl Interrupted. For the, but then for the we students. we moved past that and we started doing some stuff from some some stuff that I had had written that you'd already, already written just original material that <coughs> didn't have uh, right. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't. It's not something they'd look at and go, "Oh, I saw Robert De Niro exactly. do this," so they wouldn't have a preconceived notion right of the character. They can actually build around. He blew and Terry blew us both away with the with the amount of time that we spent with you that evening telling you how to create that character. What I remember most was we ran him as one role mm -hmm. with Alex in the other because that looked like the right setup. <coughs> and the scenes, well, they kind of worked. They needed development, but they worked. And then Kent said, switch them. And all of the sudden, there was a different man on stage in Terry. And that's when you spoke up and said, hold up a minute, let's see, and you started actually working a little bit in that scene. And it was very clear from the start that you wanted something, that you that you really did enjoy what you were doing, and it was very clear that you were going to put in the work because you hung on every word Jamie said to you in that first, that first direction when you switched over and became Robert. Because as, as the victim character, you were okay. We'll work on it again. <coughs> when we switched it and you were the Robert character in that scene, it was almost like that was the take. Yeah. And it was and it was the first or second run through that, that was that was that good already. And that's when I said <coughs> there is something there and he saw it and, and nailed you and you just paid so much attention to what he said that it was clear that you would work, that you would want this. Mm -hmm. And lead role in Afterlife was yours. From, from almost that moment on. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was, I think, a two or three week conversation just because... Well, we'd we had had a really Nick good friend. Place. I'd had Nick and Nick McClain in place for a long time, and Nick had already... We'd already shot some of the film with Nick once prior before mm -hmm. and quit doing the film because I told everybody, when it comes to this date, I'm quitting. I'm going to put this on a hold and concentrate solely on Cold Blood. And uh, we got Nick back into things one of the leading actresses moved away from town. Right. Um, so I was having to recast that anyway. Uh, and then Nick actually took a job in Murfreesboro, so it wasn't going to be he very became, feasible. It became very difficult. <coughs> it, came, it became, you know, between you know Nick going out of town and doing a lot of vacation stuff, you know, doing what a single guy does that has money. Um, you know, it, you know, a lot of times to a lot living of people. Living large. Yeah, living large. Um, and Nick was dedicated, but the thing about it was, is it was his job, you know, his job was taking him somewhere different, it was a new aspect on life for yeah. him, and so forth, and, uh, I really don't fault him for it. Uh, well, no, you gotta do what you have to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, Nick came to me and told me, he's like, you know, I really want to do it, but I don't want to waste your time, and that was one of, that was one of the things that I really appreciated about I was about gonna say, Nick. I do like that he was professional. <coughs> you know, and Nick, himself. Nick and I are very good friends. We worked together for a long time. But see, that friendship can often be... It can. A, a countermeasure, mm -hmm. and the fact that he set aside any friendship aspect of it, he and did. still uh, called well, you we'd professional. already, we'd already worked with Nick, you yeah. know, on, Nick was he's one of our... He's in the nature trailer that we're... we're he's in the nature together. trailer as well, but but, you know, he was a big help on uh, Cold Blooded. Mm -hmm. He was there, from the, he was there from the beginning to the end. We used his house second for Cold Blooded. AD. He was the second AD and kept us on point for a lot of different things. And, I mean, I love Nick to death, him and his brother both, Matt McLean, too. Well, I, I know that on the, that first night in the brewery, he saved, saved your ass because he remembered a shot I had forgotten that yeah. he hadn't gotten yet. And you thought we were done. And he's like, we need this. And, so. it, you know, I hate to see Nick move away from the project because he held the project such to a higher standard. I mean, Nick made, you know, marketed it for it, you know, as much as he could. Every time he was on Facebook, he was plastering stuff. But, but now... I, I do like the change. <laughs> you know, the change is great. I like Tarek. Me and Tarek has talked about a lot of things. I've pushed Tarek through some things that... He's okay. No, he ain't. Uh, <laughs> I've pushed, you know, I've pushed Tarek. There's been a lot of times where I've, I've gotten the the eyeballs from Terry, you know, as a director, when I say, you're not doing it, I need you to do this, and you're like, why? It's, well, because I said so. This is what I want to see. <laughs> That's your direction. La the last time when we, were rucking, when we were running Huckleberry Finn, you looked at me like, what are you talking about? No, I, I, 
<laughs> there, there we I go. wasn't thinking that. I was thinking. I was trying to figure out what you were talking about. <coughs> That's another you were conversation. saying something that I had no idea what you were talking about. <laughs> so I was like, but well, we we've actually you know we've with afterlife we've mm -hmm. pushed through a lot of things. We opened up a lot of doors Very that much. Tarek, as somebody that just started acting, didn't know things about and seeing him grow through that progression. I mean, because we worked one scene, a small scene for what? Several for, weeks. You know, for about a month and a half. Yeah. And at each time, it started growing and getting more and more and more up there. And, you know, at the last time that we worked that one scene, I told Justin, that's it. Mm -hmm. That's what you have to do. And he he listens to us as directors. He'd be great with anybody else. I per, You know, anybody that asked me for, you know, somebody that's young and that's that is, you know, an up-and-coming up actor in this time. A lot of directors don't want to work with up-and-coming. Yeah. They want to work with somebody that's already established. And I was like, this guy's not an up-and-coming. He knows. And that's why I'm actually glad you're on the show. Afterlife was supposed to be your your first, your outbreak lead mm -hmm. role. But mm -hmm. because of weather and timing and all that, we don't know what our current schedule's going to be for it. And I would hate to think that you were waiting around mm -hmm. for that break. So I would say to... Dan Baker, to Edward Valibus, to G.B. Shannon, to, to anyone else out there that's going to be making any films anytime soon, that consider Tarek Collins as a, as a <coughs> potential character because you will get the dedication, he mm -hmm. will show up, he will be on time, he will not complain on set. In fact, he will probably um. ask if you need help with anything on set. <laughs> so that said, we gotta we got to wrap it up here. Broom, I, I really want to thank you for coming out. Thanks and I, I look forward to seeing some more work, and maybe we'll have you back here soon. Absolutely. And I'd love to have you come right. on the show at some point prepared to actually stand up and, and give us a spit and, and do something Anytime, live. Uh, Tarek, thank you for taking the time to just yeah. come out here for a couple of minutes. And Shut up. I hope that maybe, <laughs> I hope that maybe some of our, uh, our, our compatriots in the business out here locally and, and regionally will, will turn to you and maybe give you a call. And I'd recommend to you to reach out to them and find out what they mm -hmm. have going on right now. Because um, there are several people who have projects going on okay. right now. Um, join us next week. Our guest will be Sam Bear. He may or may not have Charlie Metz. I hope he does. I hope he does. I really Charlie hope Metz he does. Character. Um, and he may have John Shaw with him as well, who's uh, one of the main <coughs> characters in I Filmed, Filmed Your, Your Death, death. Um, as well as a partner on the project uh, from the start. So join us next week when we'll have them. And we'll be taking a look at the uh, I Filmed Your Death. Hopefully we'll have some little clips maybe yeah. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to him I I'm supposed to see an advanced screener of the film this week maybe um, so we'll have a little bit to talk about on the show and again October 31st Thursday night 10 p.m. studio on the square Sam Bear will be premiering to a select audience I filmed your death this is an important Memphis production please support Sam and the work he has put into this film Thank you very much. We'll see you next week.